Wowie, you're back on Cuphead with kind of an old challenge, but not really. So if you look around eight months ago on my channel, I did a video titled, How Fast Can I Get All Achievements in Cuphead? It took me around four hours and 20 minutes. So today I decided we should get every single achievement again, but in the DLC instead of the main game. The main Cuphead game has 28 achievements, but in the DLC there was only 13. So I figured to up the stakes a little bit, instead of seeing how long it takes, we're going to set a hard cap of two hours to collect every single achievement in the DLC. Also, keep in mind, it's kind of been a while since I've played Cuphead, so don't make fun of me too much. And please subscribe. We're so close to five subscribers where I have something very special planned. And yeah, thank you. Let's get into it. Before you can start the challenge, we have to beat the mausoleum to unlock the boat to DLC Island. With nothing but the starting weapon, Pea Shooter, and the roundabout, it's my favorite weapon, we enter the aisle, talk to the chef, and immediately equip the astral cookie. We'll probably use this charm for the entire run. After doing the Lady Chalice tutorial for a coin, we talk to this NPC which gives us three more coins. Using our four coins, we buy the crack shot at Pork Rinds. This shot works as a homing and a straight shot weapon, and it's a very strong shot, and we also use it for the entire run. Then we really quickly beat the entirety of Equal Isle 4. After beating the DLC on regular mode, we do get a couple of achievements for doing this. We get complimented the chef for beating our main quest, alive and kicking for beating a boss using Miss Chalice, a golden touch for beating a boss with Miss Chalice super art, and we also get the latest sensation for beating a boss with a new weapon. After defeating those bosses, instead of going to fight them in expert mode right away, we instead take this ladder up to the King's Leap. The King's Leap is the DLC's way of giving us coins. Basically, there's five main levels and a secret six level where you have to fight a boss themed around a chess piece. But you don't beat the boss the regular way or with a weapon. Instead, you have to beat it using parries. For example, the first boss is a pawn, or pawns. Essentially, we need to parry the head of each of the pawns in order to beat the fight. Then we move on to the knight, or the horse. This knight has three different attacks, and after each attack we get a chance to parry the top of his head, which we have to do over and over until we eventually defeat him. Then we move to the bishop, where once we parry his head, he will light some candles around the arena. We have to put out all the candles by running next to them, and then we'll get another chance to parry his head. Going on to the fourth, and what I consider to be the hardest, is the rook. He will shoot white and pink skulls at us, and we're only able to parry the pink ones. We have to parry them back in his direction so they hit him in order to deal damage, but we also have to look out for the energy beams that he's shooting along the bottom of the screen. Then, the fifth and final is the queen, where she will run left to right, side to side, doing various different attacks where we have to parry cannons to shoot at her and deal damage to her to defeat her. After doing all of this, we do get an achievement called Checkmate for defeating all of the king's champions. But there is still another achievement we can get up here. Like I said, there's a secret sixth boss here, known as the King's Gauntlet. It isn't any different to the other bosses, except we have to beat all five of the previous champions in a row without dying. Which really wasn't that bad, and we do get another achievement for it called A King's Admiration. We make our way back to the bosses, now ready to do them on expert mode. And there's only three bosses I really want to talk about here. The first of which being the Moonshine Mob. This boss, I don't even consider it to be that difficult of a boss. But man, this boss gave me so much trouble, and I really don't know why. I think that part of the reason is because I was originally trying to S rank this boss to get an achievement out of it, but I do eventually end up bailing on the S rank and do it on a different boss. Once we get to the only plane fight in the DLC, we pay very careful attention to not accidentally kill any of those dogs that shoot spike balls at us. Those dogs are the only killable minion in the boss fight, so if we can go the whole boss fight without killing a minion, we will get the achievement called the High Hat, which is what we end up doing. Moving through the other bosses, it's nothing special till we get back to Chef Salt Baker. Now some keen people will notice that we still have three achievements left to go. One is a secret achievement, which we'll talk about. Another one is for defeating ten bosses with Chalice, which we have already done, so we unlock the achievement Decadent. And finally, we need to defeat a Isle 4 boss with a S rank. So we're left with two options. We can try and beat Salt Baker with an S rank, which we know will be the hardest option. Or, we can try and do an easier boss with an S rank and just beat Salt Baker on expert mode, doesn't matter how well we do. Looking at the time and knowing that Chef Baker is the hardest boss in the whole game, there is really only one clear option, and that is that we are going to S rank Chef Salt Baker for the achievement. So, Chef Salt Baker. Let's just talk about him for a minute. So the S rank criteria is as follows. Get three parries, have at least three HP at the end of the boss fight, Use 6 super slash EX moves and beat the boss under 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The thing about Chef Saltbaker is that you can get a lot of parries 
in every phase. So that's not too difficult at all. Using EX boost, we're always doing that. We're trying to deal as much damage as possible, so we're constantly using our EX boost. Beating the boss in under 2 minutes and 30 seconds also just isn't that bad. Beating the boss with at least 3 HP. Now that's where it gets difficult. I wasn't kidding when I said Salt Baker was the hardest boss in the game, and this whole run took me numerous attempts, which you'll probably be seeing in the background. For example, Phase 1, Bullet Hell with somewhat randomized attacks. Phase 2, 4 Salt Shakers all sneeze projectiles at you. Phase 3, Small Arena with Salt Baker bouncing back and forth while you avoid two saw blades at the bottom of the screen. Phase 4, the final phase, constantly falling platforms in a tiny arena while Salt Baker glides from across the screen trying to hit you. We need to beat all of these in a row with at least 3 HP. The one silver lining or saving grace is that using Miss Chalice we get one extra hit point. One second chance. But despite all of these odds being against us, we eventually beat him and claim our S rank. But don't be confused, this isn't our final achievement. We then go get the broken relic, talk to these guys, do a little code at the graveyard, and fight a secret boss. I don't really care for this boss, so I won't go into detail, but if you've seen my 1v1 video, uh, you'll know I don't really like this boss. If you haven't watched that, go watch that. But since then, I have practiced it, so it's really not that hard anymore, but defeating him gives us our final achievement. We did it all in just 1 hour and 27 minutes. Thank you for watching.